forward to another year of In the Trenches presented by First Star Logistics, but we wanted to give you some big news. This season, you'll find our interviews and keys to Bengals victory on In the Trenches in the First Star Media Group YouTube channel, along with our growing team of Joe Goodbury's Bengals on the Brain and Malik Wright's State of the Jungle. Also, the great folks at First Star Logistics have big plans this season with special giveaways each week the Bengals play. So be sure to visit both channels and our social media pages to stay updated on all giveaways and the latest news on the Bengals. So be sure to subscribe to the First Star Media Group YouTube channel as after this season, it'll become the channel that will host all our content. Time for keys to the game. Thursday night football, Cincinnati at Baltimore. Division rivalry. It's going to be a slobber knocker, to say the least. Physicality is going to be the word of the day. Quite honestly, I thought the Houston Texans offensive and defensive lines in the trenches, that's what we call this podcast of ours, in the trenches, Texans won, in my opinion. They were the more physical football team. They tackled better. I mean, the Texans finished blocks offensively. They got off blocks defensively, and they were sure tacklers and the Bengals were deficient in all three of those areas. That can't happen in Baltimore. You're going to have to pick it up in all of those areas. There's no question about it if you want to compete with the Ravens on national television. The Ravens are smarting from a loss, a division loss to the Cleveland Browns as well. And they had that game in control, up 14 points. And they blew the football game. In the last couple of years, the Baltimore Ravens have blown 14-point leads. So, I mean... They're having trouble finishing, and the Bengals have to take advantage of that. First thing, you have to get off to a fast start. The Bengals have scored 55 points in the first quarter. They've scored a touchdown on their first drive, their first possession, in five straight games. The thing is, it's the highest scoring quarter for Baltimore as well. The Baltimore Ravens have outscored the opponents 79-16 to in the first quarter. The most points they've scored in a quarter and the fewest points they've allowed in a quarter, a 63 point differential. That's unbelievable. <laughs> it's, it's, it's mind boggling, honestly. So you have to get off to a fast start against the Baltimore Ravens. You can't let them take control of the football game right away. In the games that they've blown the opponent out, that's exactly what's happened. They've dominated in the first quarter and built on it from there. They've, they've outscored the opponent by 35 points in the second quarter, 35 points in the third quarter. 133 points they've outscored the opponent by in the first three quarters. That's all their blowouts. They've been outscored by 17 points in the fourth quarter. They've given up 72 fourth quarter points and been outscored by 17 in so doing. So hmm. the Bengals have to keep it within a score. It's got to be a one-score game in that fourth quarter. and Put the pressure on the Baltimore Ravens. They've had problems finishing football games. In all three of their losses, That's that's been the case. Protection and uh, protecting Joe Burrow and, and pressuring Lamar Jackson is obviously going to be huge. Baltimore has 39 quarterback sacks defensively, most in the National Football League, by 13 different players. So these simulated pressure packages, like zone blitz looks like Dick LeBeau, had back in the day. Mike McDonald is is making hay with that. I mean, there's there's free runners because there's communication issues, assignment issues up front with the offensive linemen, the running backs, the tight ends, everybody involved in the protection. So uh, you've got to you've got to get after it. They're they're very sophisticated with their pressure packages. And the problem is on the road in Baltimore with that crowd noise, it becomes doubly difficult. Now they're going to be in all these simulated pre- packages, simulated pressure packages, seven guys in the box at the line of scrimmage. Who's coming, who's not? You have to apply your rules. So now you have to recognize and then communicate so everybody's on the same page. Well, you can't hear in Baltimore. So now you have to communicate with, you know, a, a wink of the eye, uh, tip, you know, nodding your head, um, you know, body language kind of things and, and, and hope that everybody un- understands what's going on and they're able to, to pick up uh, these, these pressure packages. They're, they're, uh, they're, they're, they give, they've generated 39 sacks, and they've allowed 24. So that plus 15 sack differential ratio-wise is second best in the National Football League. So they're, 
trying to protect their quarterback, Lamar Jackson, as much as they can, and they are pressuring the heck out of the other quarterback. So you're going to have to pressure Lamar, get him off his spot, and get his clock sped up, get him on the ground some, and deal with uh, that aspect of the game is going to be big, I think, in determining the outcome, the winner in the football game. You have to compete in some way, shape, or form in the run game. Baltimore is going to run the football. They're number one in the NFL in rushing attempts, number one in the NFL in rushing yards. They're averaging 154.9 yards per game. I mean, that's they're getting after it. The Bengals, dead last in the NFL in rushing attempts, dead last in the NFL in rushing yards. They're averaging 74.8 yards per game, an 80-yard differential in terms of on the ground. Going to have to compete more than that. You can't let the Baltimore Ravens outrush you by three quarters of a football field or almost a full football field if that were to be the case. You have to compete with them a little bit more than that. Baltimore has 19 rushing touchdowns, most in the National Football League. They've allowed four, third fewest in the National Football League. That plus 15 touchdown differential is best in the National Football League. They are dominating people on the ground in terms of points. Cincinnati's got four touchdowns rushing, tied for fifth fewest in the NFL. They've allowed nine. They're minus five in that category. Baltimore's plus 15. The Bengals are minus five in terms of scoring on the ground. Going to have to compete at a better rate than that in order to stay in this football game. Self-destruction. Got to avoid it. You're only going to get eight, maybe nine possessions when you play the Baltimore Ravens because their running game is so sound. They eat clock up and they, they minimize possessions. So you can't incur a bunch of penalties on the road. You can't let the crowd noise affect you where you're false starting and other various and sundry penalties. You can't, you can't uh, absorb those. And the Bengals have done a great job. They're still number one in the NFL in fewest penalties. You only get 41 penalties uh, called against them. 349 yards is fewest in the NFL as well. So you cannot blow your mind in terms of having the crowd noise affect you and get you off your game. You have to play a very clean, fundamentally sound football game with hand placement and all those sorts of things in Baltimore as well. And then, of course, turnovers. That's the biggest way to self-destruct, and Baltimore feeds off of those. <clears throat> the Bengals have 18 uh, turnovers, uh, 18 takeaways, I should say, and now uh, that's tied for first in the National Football League. They only have eight giveaways. That's tied for second fewest in the NFL. Plus 10 ratio is tied for best in the NFL. So they're number one in penalties, tied for first in turnover differential. That has to continue in order to compete against the Ravens in Baltimore. Baltimore has 15 takeaways, tied for eighth uh, most in the NFL. They've turned it over 14 times. That's a problem for them. It's tied for 20th in the league. They're only plus one. That's still top 10 in the league, but a plus one ratio. Baltimore offensively has had ball security issues in terms of high and tight, tucking that football away. They fumbled it 17 times, tied for second most in the NFL. They've lost nine of those fumbles, tied for third, or that's third most in the National Football League. So they're vulnerable. First, first guy, wrap him up. Second guy, knock the ball out. Jermaine Pratt, that's his specialty. Logan Wilson and others just kind of get after it. Red zone. Red zone efficiency. Who's going to make the four-point play or the seven-point play? That's going to be big in this football game if it can occur. Baltimore has been in the red zone offensively 35 times, tied for fourth most in the NFL. They've scored 24 touchdowns, tied for second most in the NFL. 68.6% scoring efficiency, third best in the NFL. When they get in the red zone, they finalize. The Bengals' red zone defense is going to have to step up and, and bull their necks big time. Defensively, they've only uh, allowed the opponent to get in the red zone 26 times, seventh uh, best in the NFL. They've only allowed nine red zone touchdowns, tied for fewest in the NFL. 34.6%, a little bit over one out of every three, third best in the league. 24 touchdowns scored in the red zone, nine touchdowns allowed, a 15 touchdown differential in the red zone. Come on now. <laughs> Plus 15. 
touchdown differential in the red zone is best in the National Football League. Baltimore has dominated and won games because of their red zone play. The Bengals uh, offensively, 58.3% of the time. That's 10th most in the NFL. Uh, They score touchdowns in the red zone. Defensively, they only allow a touchdown 51.4%. That's 14th in the National Football League. The big deal, though, is seven times now. They had one last week against Houston. Seven times, no points in the red zone. Seven possessions. That's tied for third most in the NFL. Can the Bengals' defense come up with seven-point play like they did? They've done seven times in the season already. Can they come up with a seven-point play on a drive against the Baltimore Ravens, who are dominant in the red zone? It's going to be a big, big deal in this football game. There's no question. If you can't come up with a seven-point play, limit the possession to a field goal only. Make a four-point play on third down. Make them kick a field goal. Don't let them punch it in into the end zone for a touchdown. Baltimore is crazy offensively. They're, they scored 31 touchdowns, second most in the league. 19 touchdowns rushing is, uh, is, is first in the NFL. Defensively, they've only allowed 13 touchdowns, first in the NFL, four touchdowns rushing, tied for third. I mean, that's, uh, that, that's unbelievable. Their touchdown ratio, uh, plus 18 offensively, plus 15 defensively. Both are number one in the National Football League. I mean, they score, and they don't let you score. That's what it's all about. All these other stats are great. But scoreboard, points on the board, points not allowed, scoreboard. I can't believe Baltimore's lost three football games with all of these things that they've done. They, In their blowouts, they've piled up some huge numbers, no question about it. Some matchups, young defensive ends, Cam Sample. Joseph Asai, Miles Murphy, they have to step up and set the edge in the run game, and they have to pressure and contain Lamar Jackson in the passing game. These young guys are going to get an opportunity on national television to step up and show that they're ready to play. You know, that's, of course, if Sam Hubbard and and Trey Hendrickson are are unable to go, or if they can go, if they're minimally effective or – they can't take as many snaps in a rotation as they normally have. These young guys have to step up and prove that they're they're ready. The linebacker duo is going to be an interesting battle. Remember against the 49ers, who has the better duo linebacker, San Francisco 49ers or Cincinnati Bengals? Well, Logan Wilson and Jermaine Pratt came up with an interception each against the 49ers and settled that score. Baltimore has Roquan Smith, Patrick Queen, two outstanding linebackers. And they're playmakers. You got to get a body on them. You have to account for them every single snap. Who's going to be the better pair at linebacker? Smith and Queen or Wilson and Pratt? Got to be the best duo. Pratt and Wilson have to be the best duo on the football field. Mark Andrews, we talk about him every time you play the Baltimore Ravens. They run the heck out of the football, but they have one of the better, if not the best, tight end in all of football. He's got six touchdown receptions again which is most in the National Football League amongst the tight end position. He's a red zone threat, and he is somebody that is uh, is going to cause issues from a matchup standpoint. The Bengals have to address Mark Andrews at the tight end position. And then finally, avoid the lull that they've had. It's not a lull. It's like a work stoppage. <laughs> Second quarter against the Houston Texans. They had three three and outs, and they had a kneel down, one play for minus one yard. That's 10 plays for 23 yards. First drive of the third quarter. No first downs, obviously. The entire second quarter, no first downs. Three three and outs and a kneel down in four possessions. First drive of the third quarter. Three plays, minus 12 yards. Another three and out. So that's 13 plays, 11 yards in five possessions. That's not a lull. Again, that's a work stoppage. Take away the kneel down. That's 12 plays, 12 yards. You're averaging one yard per play for five possessions. You know, one of them again, a kneel down. That's just no first downs. That's putting unbelievable pressure on your defensive football team. You can't do that to them on the road against a quality opponent like the Baltimore Ravens that can score points like they can. That's not complimentary football. That is just the opposite. That's about as uncomplimentary as you can be. So can't avoid that kind of a lull. 
Bottom line is the Bengals did not take care of business in a football game against the Houston Texans where they could have and should have, and they put themselves behind the eight ball. They're 0-2 in the division right now, 1-4 and in the conference. Got to beat the Baltimore Ravens. You got to. A division opponent, you don't want to fall to 0-3 and 1-5 in and in the tiebreaker scenario with a 500 record overall at 5-5. Five and five. Now you've dug yourself a huge hole. And it's going to be awfully tough to crawl out of it because time is ticking. The hourglass stand is falling through the hourglass. Your margin for error is minimized to almost nothing. Big football game, Thursday night, division rival on the road in Baltimore. You got to find a way to win that football game. Dave Lapham here. And every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football as a player. I realize self-motivation, leadership, and appreciating your teammates are key. At First Star Logistics, you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family. Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team.